Okay, so if we do have this need for an information security management program, what's that going to look like? And what are the elements that are going to help make this successful? Well, of course, just like we've kind of already talked about, is senior management's involvement. Uh, keeping in mind that senior management really has an understanding of all the elements of a business and how they work together. So they're going to be able to help us prioritize and understand those critical business functions. And they're going to help us understand what what's best in order of how we spend our budget and they'll also answer the question for us how much security we need and I know that kind of sounds like one of those questions when you say how much security is enough you know people always say you can never have too much security but we can you can actually have too much security when a, when the amount of security that you have interferes with the work of the business Right. So, for instance, if I sell ice cream, uh, ice cream cones at the mall and I have to do a retina scan every time I access the cash register, that's too expensive. It takes too long. It doesn't make any sense. Right now, technically, that would be more secure. So what we have to do is we have to think about security in terms of cost benefit analysis, how much security is enough to support the function and the business needs of our environment. And that's where senior management's involvement comes in. So they have that bird's eye view of the organization as a whole and help us uh, and can help us to prioritize. Uh, that's where governance comes in. Senior management governs the organization and they have to do so actively. And a big part of governance is laying out the policies and standards, procedures, and guidelines for which the rest of us in an organization uh, have to follow. If you were to ask who is ultimately responsible for security, you know, many people would say everybody. We're all responsible. You know, really, when it comes right down to it, the ultimate responsibility of the security of an organization is senior management. They're the ones who are liable. They're the ones who have been entrusted with the company assets. They're the ones that could be sued, that could have um, it, it repercussions if the uh, regulations are not followed. So it ultimately is senior management who's responsible for the security of the organization. Our security, the rest of us, our job is to follow the policies, procedures, standards, and guidelines as set out by senior management, right? So they lay out the policies. That's what they do as part of governance. Everybody else within the organization is accountable for following those policies. Okay. Um, roles and responsibilities. When we do set out this program, we have to have a thorough understanding of who is going to satisfy which needs within the organization in relation to information security. So what is the information security officer supposed to do? What are system owners supposed to do? What are end users? And really defining that information through our policies so that everybody understands what their part to play is. That needs to be part of our program. All right, service level agreements and outsourcing. Basically, third parties. Many organizations today uh, interact with third parties to one degree or another. We have procurements, we may have contract employees, we work with vendors that provide us services and service level agreements. So we've got to address how we're going to uh, procure, uh, how we're going to outsource, and then what sort of um, uh, who's our contract administrator, what are our security needs from those processes that we outsource, again, part of our program as a whole. A data classification. Are we working with classified data? And we also have to keep in mind that private sector can use classification of data as well. So extremely sensitive company information might be classified as confidential. Uh, you know, we've probably seen these for internal use only documents and so on. So classification is not just a convention used by the government and military. Uh, certification and accreditation, what processes do we go through in order to bring systems into our environment to make sure that that system meets the security requirement. So for those of you that work in the government uh, or military, you know, I can't just bring any system in and connect to our network, you know, depending on the type of network that it is. We have security standards. So how do we make sure that a system is certified, which means technically secure, as well as accredited, 
management signs off on it uh, in order to be in a network. These terms change from time to time, you know, authorization, different terms, but ultimately what we need is a technical evaluation of the product and then we need management to accept it. And that's traditionally been called certification and accreditation. And then ultimately we have to have a means of audit. And audit is all about account accountability, making sure that policies are uh, put in place, that policies are effective, that policies are being followed. So all of those elements come together. And this would be the basis for a security management program.